The first job I did, obviously, is to take a flying car to Timbuktu. It's obvious, isn't it? It's the first gig you're going to get, uh, which was an amazing experience. And, and this is what made me think we were onto something, is that I saw uh, an article in the newspaper about it, and they were flying to Timbuktu, and I thought, well, hang on a second. You know, I've, I've, I've travelled through the Sahara a bit. I've been to Timbuktu, I know, five or six times. Maybe this might be useful to him. So I fired off a little bit of an email. Like an hour later, I got a phone call. Yes, when can we meet? And it was like, oh, OK, this knowledge is going to be useful to some people. And so, <clears throat> long story short, we took a, a flying car to Timbuktu, um, and it really did fly. It's based upon paramotor technology, which is basically a, a parachute. Normally, it's someone with like a lawnmower engine on their back, uh, and this engine powers them into the air. And this completely, completely mad scientist, Gilo, built this um, incredible machine, and it was led by um, Neil Lawton, ex-SAS proper uh, adventurer, and we disappeared off across the Sahara Desert having amazing adventures. And believe it or not, we actually we made it to Timbuktu. It was an incredible adventure. Some of you might have heard of the adventurists. How many here? Just a sort of quick show of hands. The future of travel, as far as I'm concerned. The adventurists are brilliant. If you haven't had a look, go and have a look at their website. The idea is the world is way too safe now. Health and safety's gone mad. You cannot have a proper adventure anymore. That you'll be taken somewhere and your hand will be held and there's backup and there's support basically there's people like me around to make sure that you'll get to where you need to go. And for some people that's great, that's what they want. But for the adventurists set up by Mr Tom ten years ago was a drunken idea in the pub where they thought, what's the stupidest thing that we can come up with? How can we have a proper adventure? And they decided the best thing to do was try and drive a Fiat Panda from the UK to Ulaanbaatar. So they gave it a go. Uh, they didn't get there, but they had a brilliant time in the process. The next year they tried again and they had three mates that came with them and three cars. This year will be the 10th year anniversary, 350 teams battling across the Mongolian steppe in the crappiest cars you've ever seen, with no backup, no routes, no maps, no preparation, or as much or as little preparation as you like. The point being, it's, and I heartily agree with this, it's when you get lost, it's when you break down, it's when things go wrong that you have the adventure. And actually, if you make it to Ulaanbaatar, you've almost failed. You shouldn't make it. And, you know, people take all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Uh, uh, we, I, so I organised one to Africa. They wanted to do one down to Cameroon. And the idea is that each team has to raise money for charity. I think they've raised over four and a half million pounds now with the various adventures they do all over the world. And they came to me and said, right, we want to do one in, um, in Africa. Can you help? And I thought this sounded like a great laugh. And before I knew it, I ended up dressed as the Stig, driving around the Top Gear test track in uh, an Austin 7 um, with various other ridiculous cars in tow behind, about to set off across Africa, across the Sahara Desert, to get to Cameroon, where we then uh, sold the cars. We set up an auction, and we sold the cars to charity, and we also put on a, a music festival down there. And it was, a, it was an amazing experience. But this is what I love about it. You know, th these guys came in fur-covered Bedford rascals. They brought a, a Chesterfield sofa with them, and they dressed in tweed. It's just that brilliant British eccentricity. So if you haven't looked at the Adventurous website, I, I highly recommend that you do. And I found myself in ridiculous situations. I now, whenever I find myself going, how did I get here? And sort of pinching myself. This is one of them. This is me. We organised a parade through Limbay Town. I got the local brewery involved and this was like their kind of carnival float with a massive sound system. We were raising money for the backer pygmies of the, the rainforests in eastern Cameroon and a load of them came up to be at the festival and all got absolutely, excuse my French, shit-faced. All of them were really, really drunk because this was the best thing they'd ever done. And then they all decided to get on top of the car and dance. So I then spent my entire time trying to stop drunken pygmies falling off the roof of this car as we drove around Cameroon. And it was like, this is how I earn my living. And it was amazing. So I found myself in some quite amazing experiences. I've also done the motor taxi junket for them. I was recently in Peru. Same thing, ridiculous motor taxi. It's a terrible Chinese motorbike with like a sofa on the back. And the idea is you have to try and get across Peru in two weeks. Um, and, and I helped to organise that, and, it, and it's great fun. And I end up being kind of, a, this, this was Rally HQ that we set up, where they all have a go at test driving these awful machines, and then try and get them across the mountains, the jungles, the deserts. Really, really good fun. Uh, at the other end of the scale, I've done schools expeditions. I've taken quite a few kids. I work with a partner who, um, a partner company in South Africa, and uh, these kids spend two years raising the money to go out to do expeditions. This is not mummy and daddy paying for it on their credit card. They go and pack bags in uh, 
uh, Morrisons, places like that, to raise the money. And we link them up with communities, rural communities in Africa, where they go and work with them on various projects. Uh, it is a bit like, again, the logistics of this. Uh, I've done trips of between 30 and 60 people and moving them, <coughs> setting up tents, food, cooking, moving them around safely. You know, you can imagine what the risk assessments are like for stuff like this. It's incredibly rewarding. It, it literally blows a lot of these kids' minds. Um, then the other end of the scale from that is uh, classic car rallies, long distance from Paris to, uh, from Beijing to Paris, London to Cape Town, and later this year, one in um, uh, South Africa. And that's rally support. This is the opposite end of the scale from the adventurous. This is hardcore, there's medics, there's mechanics, there's people like me, and it's this huge, expensive circus that moves from one place to another. Um, and, and again, it has a, a, an element of British eccentricity about it. 1914, this guy drove this 1914 car from, uh, from Beijing back to uh, Paris. So what have I learned from all this? What has all this sort of experience given me? I've learned the hard way, I've made some mistakes, um, and if that helps you, or if it, if I can give you some tips or some advice that might be helpful, that'll be good. It is by no means an, ex an exhaustive list. There is a million other things I could have included in this, but as I say, I've tried to kind of keep it relatively general.